Hi everyone, welcome back to Strategic Management. Today we're going to look at why so many acquisitions fail to create value. A considerable body of research shows that most acquisitions fail to create value. In fact, a lot of acquisitions destroy value, a lot of value. We're going to look here at the top four reasons that acquisitions often fail to create value. Reason number one is that it's much easier to overpay than to underpay. Whether you're negotiating with the owner of a privately held firm or you're trying to buy a majority share of the stock of a publicly held firm, the odds are stacked against you. When you're negotiating with the owner of a privately held firm, they know far more about the firm's resources and prospects than you do. When you try to buy a majority share of the stock of a publicly held firm, you bid the price up well over the pre-acquisition price. Either way, you're almost always going to pay more, often significantly more, than the firm is currently worth. If you didn't, the target's current owners wouldn't sell. Reason number two is hubris. Managers of acquiring firms often overestimate their ability to manage, improve, or assess the prospects of the target firm. Pro tip, if the source of value sounds fluffy, walk away quickly. An excellent example of a fluffy value statement was provided by Gerald Levin, the CEO of Time Warner at the time of the AOL Time Warner merger, when he said, the merger will create unprecedented and instantaneous access to every form of media and to unleash immense possibilities for economic growth, human understanding, and creative expression. That went on to become the largest acquisition disaster of all time, destroying $99 billion. Reason number three is agency problems. Sometimes managers want acquisitions for reasons that have nothing to do with shareholder value. For example, managers might want the firm to be bigger because it gives them more pay and power. They may want the firm to be more diversified because it gives them less personal risk. They may want to enter businesses that enable personal consumption, such as when they say, let's buy a baseball team. Or they may want to enter industries that are sexier because it gives them more visibility and outside benefits. Sometimes this is known as empire building, such as when Jean-Marie Messier transformed a French water and waste management company that was a profitable cash cow for fixed income investors into an extremely risky media company called Vivendi and subsequently went to jail for misuse of funds. Last but certainly not least is reason number four, execution problems. Sometimes it's hard to harvest the potential value of an acquisition because it requires painful changes, such as firing people or closing factories, or because the cultures of the companies clash. Here are some tips for how to increase the likelihood that an acquisition creates value. First, invest in serious pre-acquisition diligence and consider worst-case scenarios. Make sure the value you are seeking from the acquisition is specific, quantifiable, and feasible. Compare that value to the cost of the acquisition, including the opportunity cost of using the money otherwise. Recognize that the people currently running the company probably know the firm and industry better than you do. And finally, Get commitments from stakeholders to the changes you will need to harvest the value from the acquisition in advance. 